Hi, welcome to This Week in Ames. On today's show, we check in with the City of Ames Finance Department. Hi, my guest today is Nancy Masteller, bu uh, Budget Officer with the City of Ames. Nancy, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. We were just discussing beforehand that although you're recently named Budget Officer, you have been with the City of Ames for many years. Tell me yes, a little I bit about, about your background. Um, I started with the City of Ames in 1991 as an accountant, and so I have been here almost 22 years and spend a large share of that time in the Finance Department doing financial statements and working with the auditors. So last fall, I took the position of budget officer upon the retirement of Carol Collins, who was our longtime and very wonderful budget officer. So it's been kind of a nice shift for me to look at things in a little different perspective from the budget point of view instead of the uh, financial statement point of view. So the budget, which we're going to talk about later, is obviously a, mm -hmm. a very elaborate, uh, yes. extensive process. Um, as an accountant, what kind of work were you doing for the city? Um, as with the, my accounting background, I prepared the financial statements, and mostly I did the ones that were for the um, business type operations that the city has, the utilities, electric, water, sewer, um, and then prepared reports for departments for all kinds of things from the library board to the URAB board for the electric utility, and just provided information for the departments to make decisions based on uh, how their numbers were coming in with their revenues and expenses, you know, monthly and at the end of the, each fiscal year. Now, I think the finance department may be um, one of sort of the uh, most um, overlooked departments in our, our city government. I don't really think that residents understand every bill that comes in is being looked at by many different eyes before yes. any payments are being made. And I am somebody who's been caught on, <laughs> uh, my eyes weren't all dotted and the T's weren't all crossed and a right. payment was rejected. Um, talk a little bit about how many pieces of paper are being handled and just the whole process of accounting in the city. Um, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, a lot of different eyes do look at things. We're always very conscious of the fact that we're spending public money. So, you know, departments are the responsible for initiating the payments when they have a, a bill that's coming through to be paid, but then it gets looked at again in our department to make sure that they're, it's complying with budgetary regulations, that the account number is correct, that the proper people have signed off on the bill to pay it. So. Uh, it's handled several times, and uh, I, I, I honestly couldn't tell you how many bills we pay, <laughs> but we produce a lot of checks every week. It's becoming less over time as we have a lot more electronic payments now. You know, the, it's, the society is kind of changing for how bill paying is happening, and that's nice because it's reducing our paper, but the same number of payments still go through. And you mentioned auditors, so it's not only just internally that we are looking at every document and watching where the money goes, but also we get watched. Oh yes, very closely. We're audited each year and it's a long process. You know, we really have to be able to explain everything that's gone through and how we've documented things and how we've paid things and we're always very conscious of that fact that it's going to get looked at and I think it's, it's a good idea. It keeps us on our toes not just you know looking for anything that's wrong but just for doing things correctly and having uh, all of our financial information as correct as possible. So from moving from that position into the budget officer position, mm -hmm. uh, you have a copy of a budget here. I did bring it's one. It's many hundreds of pages long. Yes it is. Yes it is. It's it's a big document and with a lot of detail and uh, and these are actually two of the books that are of the three that are produced every year in the finance department. We are doing the budget every year looking forward to how the money will be spent. This is our capital improvement plan, which is the large projects that will uh, be undertaken by the city. Um, they're typically larger things that we may have to issue bonds for, and that uh, is usually planned out five years in advance. And then in addition to these two, the accounting staff in the finance department produces the financial statements for how the past fiscal year ended up, and uh, that's also a a pretty good sized document that uh, that's the one that is audited by the auditors every year and then presented to City Council when it's complete. Now would it be fair to say that this is the operating expenses and that this is sort of the bricks and mortar? Yes, this is the day, more the day-to-day -day operations although we do summarize the capital improvement plan in here briefly but this is more the day-to-day -day, department by department you know how uh, the fire department is funding you know their services, the library, SciRide, 
And this is more, yeah, the larger capital projects that they would uh, like to pursue, such as street improvements or remodeling a fire station. Of course, like the library renovation project is a large one that everybody's aware of right now that was in here and continues to be in here probably this year as it's still ongoing. Yeah, and this is not just looking ahead one year. Again, like you said, this yes. is looking ahead five years, which mm -hmm. sometimes is, uh, takes a little bit of guesswork. But oh, sure, and changes from year to year. You know, it's refined as we get closer to those projects and some things are delayed and some things are moved up and cost estimate changes, but it's good, I think, to look ahead, especially the utilities need to do that to consider uh, possible rate increases to fund large projects such as the water plant mm -hmm. which is coming up. So it's good to plan out that far for the large things so we don't have you know big rate increases in one year when we need them for large projects. So going back to the operating budget, now yes. that would show you every department and division expenses, yes. um, but it also has a, a bit of a narrative. It also explains a little bit more about what the departments are doing, what their sure. goal is, sure. um, what the programs and services they offer. So it's really it's really interesting reading. Yes, <laughs> hopefully. The, actually, probably the finance department prepares the not as interesting part because we're the ones that drop in all the numbers and make sure everything balances and ties out. But the departments are responsible for writing a narrative in each part kind of highlighting what uh, you know big accomplishments they've had for the year and what services they provide so that's always very interesting reading you know and to see how many fires were put out last year and how many books were added to the library collection so there's a lot of interesting reading in there I think. Now the process itself is um, it seems like almost as long as the fiscal year. It is. <laughs> now we're on a fiscal year calendar that yes, starts are. July 1st mm -hmm. ending on June 30th What's the process now for, we'll be working on the 2014-2015 yes. uh, fiscal year budget Yes, pretty it, soon. Yeah, well, and it's already actually underway. Um, the, we always meet with a few departments early. We call them the early eight because we need to have some that aren't more, they offer services internally, such as insurance and human resources. We, they do their budgets first so that we can drop those numbers into the other department's budgets. So they're already getting started. We have our first meeting with the department tomorrow, as a matter of fact, and uh, we're working ahead on projecting out um, some of the you know revenues and how they're looking. And we know kind of now the audits you know getting close to being you know completed, kind of where we ended up last year. So we know what our starting point is for the funds this year, and uh, we have our town budget meeting on October 1st and and that's sort of the public kickoff I think that's, that's right when um, residents realize um, we're getting ready for the next fiscal yep. year and a lot of residents take that opportunity to come to the uh, town budget meeting on uh, October 1st like you said 7 p.m. at the council chambers and share some of their thoughts about yes. where money um, should um, sh should be uh, delegated. Yes, and that's their opportunity if they have specific requests, um, you know, for maybe a street project that they think needs to be looked at, or, you know, really any kind of funding, you know, they can direct it to the city manager's office or to their city council member, and then uh, they'll be included and looked at and considered as we, you know, go through the budget process. Yeah, this certainly year. no guarantee that anything no. gets funded, but an opportunity to sure. share thoughts of um, where maybe funding should be directed, yes. and and an opportunity to give an explanation as to why. That's right. So that starts October first. Um, really, um, things kind of get kicked off January, February. You start seeing a lot more of the department presentations, yes. and the process ends uh, with uh, certification by the state in yep. March. That's right. Yep. We, it's a long process over the winter for all of us. The departments typically come in and we meet with them one on one through um, November and December. Then uh, there's usually a follow-up meeting for the larger departments, such as public works and the electric utility with the city manager directly to make sure that everything is, you know, in order to how he would like it be pre to be presented to city council. And then usually in about mid-January, we're printing the books up, the first draft of it, mm -hmm. and that's what will go to the city council. And I believe, if I remember the calendar correctly, our first meeting is like the very last Friday of uh, October of January, January is when we'll start off and then the first week of February they'll do their presentations to City Council. And we obviously publicize those dates. We like yes. to get um, resident participation. 
Uh, it's nice that we can now start putting this stuff online. Yeah, so, that's been a huge um, we don't, change. <laughs> we don't. Uh, we had moved from paper copies to discs, where people could pick up a disc, yes. and now actually we've tried to put as much on the website as we can. And, yes. and always a good uh, place to go look for those budget documents. Yes, they are always online. The drafts will be online, and then after they're um, approved by city council, the final versions are online. When we do the final version of our program budget, we do add a lot of text to it and explanations of the different projects, and so it takes us a little while to write all of that up, but then we get it um, online as soon as possible after it's been approved, and it's, uh, yeah, the information is available, and we've really reduced. We used to print a lot of paper copies of these documents, and we're just finding less and less that we need to do that. People are really preferring, I believe, the online version. Yeah, one thing I find amusing, I think every academic year, is the number of students who are looking at our budget, probably for, yes. for a class, yes. and um, ask, for, um, ask for the copy, and, and we do, um, I think we do sell them. The we do, especially the, our uh, audited financial statements. I know they use that at Iowa State for the governmental accounting class there, and uh, we, we print up and copies for them to come in and purchase, but it is available online as well, mm -hmm. the financial statements as well as the budget and the capital improvement plan. So if you were going to write a lot of notes in this and you wanted a sure. hard copy, of course, um, we do just sell it at cost yes. and um, people can pick that up. But if, but if it's, and it's available at the library. If yes, it is. If you just look yep. at it. Um, an interesting document. It is, it is. And we occasionally have requests. We have them in our office going back um, to, I believe, the 70s. I think there are older copies available at the library. We did just recently have someone come in who was working on uh, some historical information and wanted to use uh, our conference room and go through some of our old uh, copies of the budgets and uh, we certainly allow people to do that. So, Well, it's it's budget time of year so I was glad you could stop by. Yeah, now this is your you. busy time. Nancy, um, we congratulate you on your promotion and thank we you. look forward to another successful budget season. Thank you. So again, if you're interested in participating in the budget process, remember the first public kickoff to that is the town budget meeting on October 1st. That is a Tuesday in October. It starts at 7 p.m. at City Hall. Also, if you're looking forward to some of those fall cleanups, remember Yard Waste Free Days are now on our website. They start on October 19th, and there's a special schedule. Look for those at www.cityofames.org. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks for watching, and tune in next week for This Week in Ames.